thing about Lena Wertmuller that was just so fa fascinating to me was I just saw her kind of from a satirical eye. I mean, there was just something funny about the sexuality in her movies. I mean, they were dead serious, but to me, they were just kind of funny. And I remember just seeing her interviewed in the foreign press, and she was such a character. I'd just never seen anybody like her. So that's, I just thought she was a you know, worthwhile character to do. Let's talk about some of your other famous characters and some of the sketches that you were in. So you spoke a little bit about the Valley Girl, but how did you uh, transform her? Did she change it all from the Groundlings to Saturday Night Live? No, uh, other than, you know, she was a stewardess, but she had many incarnations, a secretary, um, but she was always her, um, just kind of clueless, but nice, never mean. Um, no, she didn't change that much. You mentioned um, the Coneheads earlier and the development of that, but um, describe the sketch and, and why do you think that became so popular? Well, the sketch was a typical family dynamic. Um, I think that, that what was funny was that he was a driving instructor and that I went to high school and that, you know, the disclaimer and the explanation for our appearance is that we were from France. And then, you know, the touch, the, the inimitable Tom Davis touch, which is that those words like you flath rag and, you know, the, uh, what were those, the senso rings and all sorts of words that are just so Tom and primat and Beldar and Ben Connie, you know. Um, and the situations are, you know, when we would stand next to someone, we would stand really close and the way that we would eat and the description of food. I just think that um, it was unique and idiosyncratic and funny, just silly. There's something Tom especially could write silly really well. Um, one of your famous sketches is The Slumber Party. Can yes. you talk about that? Well, that was written by Marilyn Miller. And um, I'm also a huge fan of Madeline Kahn. Also very influenced by her work, her character work. I'm a big admirer of, of her character work. That was um, so funny to me, just that kind of preteen um, misconception of what sex is. I think Jane actually had the funniest line, which was, I'm embarrassed when I know someone's looking in my ear. That, you know, just killed me. Um, there was no one that could write that kind of stuff better than Marilyn, who wrote the Judy Miller stuff. And was it fun for all the, the girls to get to have a sketch like that together? It didn't seem to happen that often. That Well, I think it seems like, yeah, of course it was fun. I think we did uh, Married in a Minute, which was also a Marilyn Miller sketch. Yeah, and I think we did, oh, that Joan Crawford one, I don't know if that was Marilyn's. Um, we wanted to ask about the Chevy song that the girls all sang together. Um, I think Chevy was still in the cast at that time, and he had injured himself in the scrotum f doing one of his falls, so he was not in the show. And our musical director, Paul Schaefer, was a huge fan of the Phil Spector girl group sound so he wrote the song which was wonderful and that was really kind of fun to to um to do and then when it was on a fan magazine they dubbed it chevy's girls which we of course never saw ourselves of as but uh boy did that stick um talk about the american dope growers union Oh, look for the union lab. <laughs> oh, well, let me see. You know, I, I didn't know anything about uh, the union and, and uh, that song. Even though I knew that melody pretty well, I didn't really know its source. Uh, but I was happy to be singing it. And um, I never really saw it until years later. And it's kind of apocryphal in a way. I mean, if, if 
people would just get with the program. We could have a really good profit source for this country. But it was funny the way they staged it, having more people coming into the frame from all walks of life, you know. I think that was terrific. Did you like having the opportunities to sing in a sketch? Yeah, I mean, I didn't know any better, you know. <laughs> Talk about E. Buzz Miller's Animal Kingdom. Oh my gosh. Um, Danny went to this island in, Rang uh, in Tahiti called Rangiroa. And I actually went there too at some point, but um, he met a guy there who sold the postcards with the topless women. <clears throat> and that, that is who he fashioned the character off after. And uh, he just wrote General Bimbo. You know, and so that that was what I came up with. But that was really fun to do, and that that outfit, this this thing, the body thing, was a piece. Obviously, you know, that was a an, an addition. That was not my real body, but that was even funnier for me to actually be able to work in that thing. And I really loved being able to play a bimbo. That was just there was something so freeing about it, and. Um, there was something so immature about him making something sexual about everything. Yeah, that's by Tyrion. Tyrion, you know. Uh, it was just so childish. Loved it. How much did costumes and, you know, makeup help you develop a character? Uh, hmm. Well, I think more in the groundlings that was costumes were more um, effective in enhancing the feeling of the character than on SNL uh, except for the coneheads obviously um, I don't recall really having a, a real feeling that that a costume you know, imbued me with any more feeling about the character I was playing. Well, some of my favorites I'm not even in, like the Raging Queen, um, Miles Cowperthwaite with um, oh, Monty Python. Come on. Is it Eric Idle? It's not Eric Idle. It's the other one, Michael, Michael Palin. Palin. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's okay. Uh, He's the, he's the cabin boy, but uh, that was an incredible one. There was also one I was in where um, there was a takeoff on the Trogs tape, which is a very infamous underground tape about this band, the Trogs, who had a big hit with Wild Thing, and they were trying to do their next song, and they were just having a terrible time, and whoever was the engineer had recorded the session, and they're just cussing at each other. and. We were trying to do kind of a takeoff on it only in Elizabethan times. And John and Danny had already left the show at this point, and John was making an appearance as the queen in drag. And Paul Schaefer was in the sketch, and, you know, we were replacing the word fucking with flogging. And I was a page in the scene, you know. And Schaefer accidentally said fucking on the air. And I had just enough time to run into the control booth to see what was happening. And it was, they were frozen. Everybody was frozen in their spot. They were just so shocked. And then I went back into the scene, and then John came in as the queen. And he was saying his lines, and when he was saying them, he was taking his fan and hitting John on every single word he was saying and laughing. And, of course, everybody was losing it. Now, you know, that's kind of rare. I don't think, you know, I could count on maybe one hand when people would lose it in a scene in the five years I was there. And there was one time when I lost it in a scene, and it was when Rodney Dangerfield hosted the show. And we were doing a takeoff on Manhattan, which was Manhasset. And I was playing the Mariel Hemingway role. And he did a joke that I had already heard. In, in dress rehearsal, which was, you know, I'm telling you, Manhasset is rough. I saw a waterbed. There was a guy at the bottom of it. And I had heard the joke already. And it, it just, I lost it on the air. Um, they're just, 
it's so hard. I mean, there are so many sketches, and half of them I don't remember. When I see some of the shows that are on the, the discs, on the discs when I watch them on the television machine, I, you know, I, can't, I can't believe I don't remember those shows, those sketches. I mean, there are some I have absolutely no memory of doing. The content, no memory.